so it's hard to get on site for all the infrastructure installs. And uh, none of the ones I've been to so far have a plexiglass to help you see things. So we built this wall to kind of give you an idea. And we're going to show you how to do a standard wall fish when uh, you have a hollow wall, which is usually like your inner walls. Um, how to deal with maybe a inner wall that's adjacent to another building so you have fire stops inside of it, depending on how the code is and how we can punch through to get through to get to the bottom there. And then also how we deal with insulation, which you're going to find in a lot of outer walls when you're uh, doing infrastructure in a building or in a house especially. This is common insulation, but we've seen it in commercial construction as well so we built this wall uh, showing you the display side and Corey's going to walk you through how he deals with each of these situations and the tools that we use to get it done um, and it's what you've seen it done a few times uh, and a lot of practice Corey's going to run through it very fast because well he's installed thousands of these so he's kind of an expert so we're going to talk about how he does it and some of the methodologies Let's get started. The first thing we want to do when we're doing a wall fish is always go from the top of your wall down because you can move your ceiling tile that might end right about here and you have all this space to where if you make a mistake or if there's a fire stop somewhere in the wall, you don't have to worry about that because that's an invisible mark that you just made. So let's say we're going to go through the top of the beam. So we'll just go right in here. We drilled into the wall. Now the first thing I always recommend is you want to get your fish rod and find your baseboard. That means that if you've got enough of these rods put together to go down through the wall, you just missed a fire stop that doesn't exist in this particular cavity. With that being said, we'll pull this rod back out. Our next step in the process is you've got to take your Carlin mud ring. The mud ring that you have has four little dots, as you see. These four points are for simple marking purposes only. So basically, I'm going to take an ink pen, and we always use a level for these. These are very important that you don't make this crooked, because if you make this crooked on the wall, you can never get your wall plate to sit right. It'll always look funny. So we come down here into our first cavity. And we want to put this on the wall approximately where we would assume that this is going to sit. I always put the bubble level right on the top here. You get that thing to where it's leveled out. Great. Now we make our four marks. When you make your four marks, it's as simple as just sticking your ink pen right into those little dot holes. Great. Now we got one, two, three, and four. Now, this is a straight edge along the side. So this is how I always prefer to do it is we take this mud ring and we use itself as a straight edge from dot to dot and just intersect the points and connect the dots. If you go over and past your dot a little bit, it doesn't really matter that much. The wall plate will cover about a quarter inch on each side of the mud ring once you put it on. You come in here, dot to dot, and dot to dot and now my preference is always to come in with my drill. I take a regular 3 8 drill bit on my drill. Now I'll come in and drill right into the corner. And all this does is make life a lot easier when you go to actually make your cut. When I make my cut, doesn't matter what you use. In this instance, I'm not using a great tool, but I have a sawzall blade. It's as simple as that. You take and you cut your mud ring out. Of course, a normal wall wouldn't move like this. You cut along your lines. square just like that. Now the simplest part about this is that now that you have that you have your fish rod in the wall that's about big enough for you to reach your whole entire hand right inside there and you could pull your rod out. In this instance 
since this is a demo wall, it's going to be a lot easier because we can just reach right in there and find our rod. Quite simple. Let's just say we're going to pull some coax. We feed this on, attach to our rod, pull back up, and presto, your wall fish is complete. Now you have this big square hole at the bottom. Very simple. The mud ring always goes in, tab side in, into the wall. You want the flush outer ring to be the outer ring flush to the wall. So you pull your wire through the back side, just like this. You stick your mud ring in there. Sometimes it takes a little finesse to get it in there. There it is. Now we take our impact or a screwdriver and you just simply shoot these two screws in. So there you go. You have your mud ring installed with your wallfish complete. Secondary, we're going to move into our next cabin. This is what happens when you start from the bottom and we're talking about that potential of running into a fire stop in your wall like we talked about in the first cavity here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to drill our hole. Now we're going to come to the top of our wall and we're going to drill right in because now it's time to run our wire through our wall. Uh oh, we've run into an obstruction. That's our fire stop. This is what we were talking about. Sometimes what you'll see is in the wall cavity they'll build a wall or uh, a stud going across like that. And basically that's for fire intensive purposes to stop that from basically coming up through and burning up through the cavity and coming up into the next floor or reaching your ceiling plenum faster. This is when a fish rod or a fish bit will come in handy. This happens to be a six foot wall fish bit. You have to drill into this instance. You're already panicked because you've got a hole in the wall. This is not good. Now there's a couple ways to play this out. Your first way to play this out would be, okay, now it's time to find a new cavity and put a blank on there. But when that's just not an option, you have to come in with a drill bit like this. Just like that. Now we have this drill bit stuck through there. And as you can see in the bottom hole of the wall, and on the back side of the wall, you can see that drill bit. Great. So we pull this back, and then we find the tip of this. And you can pull that out of the wall enough to where you can connect it, because that, that bit does flex quite a bit. In fact, there's a stretcher tool you can get for these bits, where basically you can take this six foot bit and put it on the inside of a wall and drill down through a cavity and it forces that bit to make that turn within the wall so it's not coming out a perimeter wall or going into the next office. Nobody wants that problem. So once we've connected, it's as simple as pulling our bit back out. If we can get it out. No, oh, in this instance, I guess we're gonna go to the other side. Photo edit that out. <laughs> well, on the back side, there's an identical hole up on the shaft. So we're going to connect it to this side. Because sometimes it's just not possible to re pull that bit back through the wall the same way it went in. So, what we do in that case is we take it from the bottom of the wall and we just drag this sucker right out, work it out. So we have our wall fish complete and we bypassed our fire stop. Now for our final method of wall fishing, we're going to use the magnet pole. Now as you see I've already connected my wire because once you drill the hole for the magnet pole you're almost done. <laughs> it's that simple. The magnet pole is a super powerful magnet that will attach to this and we're about to do the demonstration, so watch and learn. Now keep in mind when using a magnet pole, you cannot use a magnet pole 
when you have a fire stop in the wall, you are just not going to get that big magnet through that hole. So basically, I always try to use a bigger bit when I'm using the magnet pole. In this inch instance, I'm using an inch and three or inch and one quarter bit. As you notice, the insulation falling out. That's because this is an insulated wall. Magnet poles do best in an insulated wall because you don't have to guess where the rod went. All right, so pretty much what we're looking at here is with insulation in the wall, this is about what you're going to deal with when it's time to use a fish rod to get your, uh, get your wall fish completed. Now you've got it most of the way down there. Okay, we found the baseboard. Now what? Now you've got to fish your hand into that wall and dig that sucker out. It's a pain in the butt. Using the magna pole, it's as simple as dropping it in the hole. Oh look, my wallfish. How about that? Oh yeah, it'll move all over the place. So we come down to the bottom, and like I said, this is a much more crude method because you don't have to be as accurate. However, you're still probably going to put a mud ring down here if you're going to do this right. So let's go ahead and just pop a hole in here. Oh, more insulation. See what I mean? Now, I've already got this prepared, but this is about when you take the magnet end and you just kind of drop it into the wall. Oh, look, I think we found our spot. Now, sometimes you got to work it down. crude but nonetheless effective there we go now we found it now we've got our wall fish or at least we had it <laughs> so there it is all right well in our last instance with the magnet pole say for instance you're anything like me and you maybe lost a drill bit or dropped a pair of snips down a wall or something of the sort well they're gone forever not with the magnet pole. Best thing about the magnet pole is, hey, I got my drill bit back. And the last piece that Corey kind of forgot is that you could use the other end of the magnet pole to find some things that might be in the wall. Holy cow. Uh, I think we got to cut a hole for that. Uh -oh. so. It's like we're moving into the double gang wall plates now. Double gang wall plates. Let's see what we got. Oh, oh. what do we got? I almost got it. Uh oh. As soon as the job's done, that should come right out of the wall. Holy cow. <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> exactly. Wait. We'll leave links in the description below all the different tools we use. Uh, We'll leave links that. to the different beers we drink um, and all that fun stuff at the end. None of this until the job's over. That's an important aspect of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Especially working on ladders. Working on ladders, working with power tools. Uh, yeah, all jobs may end with this, but they certainly don't begin with it. One Thanks. other thing, when you're working on a ladder, don't ever step back and admire your work. <laughs> That's from experience, right? No. Okay. <laughs>